And let's recall the agenda of the webinar. I will give a, a very brief introduction, and then there will be uh, two main presentations. The presentation of the target data model, uh, particularly regarding the extension of the Inspire uh, building a data team for uh, GeoSmart City, and then an example of uh, data uh, transformation. Um, the introduction of the webinar is very brief because uh, in the frame of uh, the GeoSmart City project, um, we are doing, uh, uh, we are responsible for the um, design of uh, two different data models for the two different scenarios dealt with uh, in the project which are uh, the green energy um, related to the energy performance of buildings, and then the underground scenario, which will be covered by um, in, in another uh, dedicated webinar that we will uh, organize in a in, in, in few weeks. The importance of this uh, uh, webinar is uh, because um, we want to share with you, first of all, the uh, uh, choices and the uh, rationale that we used uh, to the um, uh, design of the extended data model, giving uh, emphasis to the um, different aspects related to the extension because they are not simply related to the um, first phase of the extension, which is the conceptual um, extension related to the um, design of uh, the UML model, but then through some uh, details about some issues that we discovered when tra translating the conceptual UML model into the physical XSD GML application schema to be further used in any uh, transformation tool, and then also some issues that we discovered when using uh, in practice the software tool able to make the physical transformation. So let's start with, a, with an overview of the, um, the extension uh, that we made. It is uh, important uh, to spend some um, uh, time to understand the target data model that we are going to use uh, in our transformations because all the steps related to the transformation itself uh, need a uh, deep knowledge of uh, the target data model uh, which is common to all the pilots that in the GeoSmart City project are dealing with uh, the energy, um, the green energy uh, building scenario. So, um, very brief overview about the methodology for the production of the GeoSmart City data model, the Inspire data specification extension approach, and an insight into the uh, green energy um, scenario data model. Um, some of the uh, partners of Josman City already know this uh, slide presented in previous meetings, but uh, it is important to, re to recall and to remind how we built our data model. We started from the use cases of the pilots uh, involved, and then from the formal description of the uh, use cases, we started deriving the data modeling requirements for each use case using a very um, um, common language based and tool based on uh, Excel spreadsheets in order to share um, the, all the steps of the process related to the design of the common data model, which uh, um, was the first step achieved with an Excel spreadsheet uh, uh, combining all the data requirements coming from the different uh, uh, use cases. We used Excel because it was um, uh, a formalism um, suitable to collect, uh, to share uh, the views and collect in interactions from all the partners, not necessarily experienced with UML. Then, once we agreed uh, the um, version, the stable version of the common data model, then we um, followed the, the further steps related to the generation of the UML data model and then the generation of the XSD application schema, uh, the GML application schema, so the file XSD, which has to be used in any um, transformation software tool uh, used by pilots to make their physical transformations. Of course, there is a, a continuous uh, 
uh, revision uh, loop uh, here uh, because once the common data model has been agreed, then when entering into the more detailed phase of performing the physical transformation, some further um, retune uh, may be uh, needed, particularly when dealing with uh, different partners uh, using the same model with different data requirements merged in one common data model. Of course, we um, uh, follow with the, uh, the, the approach was to extend the, the existing inspired data specifications, and in doing this, uh, we strictly uh, adhered to the document, uh, uh, one of the um, founding and uh, underlying document used by Inspire, which is the D2C Generic Conceptual Model, the most updated version 3.4. And in this document, uh, which together with the D26 guidelines to encode for the encoding are the, the underlining uh, document for uh, deriving and using the uh, data specifications. In the Annex F, there is, uh, uh, which is called example for an extension to an inspired application schema, we want to highlight in this uh, red box, uh, in the section F2, which are the general rules, uh, uh, stating that uh, um, extending an inspired data specification would imply, at a minimum, extension does not change anything in the inspired data specification, but normatively references it with all its requirements, and the, ex uh, the extension does not add a requirement that breaks any requirement of the inspired data specification. But how it is written here, however, the extension may, for example, do any of the following. Add the new application schemas, importing Inspire or other schemas as needed. Add new types and new constraints in your own application schemas. Extend Inspire code lists as long as the Inspire data specification does not identify the code list as a centrally managed non-extensible code list. Or add additional portrayal rules. So, um, it is very important that uh, uh, the, uh, when proceeding to the extension of an existing inspired data specification, these uh, general rules are very well taken into account. These and the following are two screenshots uh, taken from pages uh, existing in the PDF version of the building uh, inspired data specification. Simply stating this one that we have uh, basically six application schemas available for buildings. So the base and the extended base, and then um, the, the, you, the possibility to use these uh, 2D or 3D, 2D extended or 3D extended in order to have uh, to combine simple or extended semantics with simple with the 2D or 3D uh, geometries. In the case of uh, uh, GeoSmart City, I anticipate that uh, we uh, focused on the uh, 2D extended because according to the data requirements, uh, the need was more on the extended semantics, but the 2D geometries, uh, 2D geometry was um, sufficient. Again, uh, the concept and the approach that we used is already present in this uh, figure of the data specification, the figure four, in which you say that uh, you see that uh, the, uh, what shall be in Inspire, so mandatorily, the core 2D or 3D, according if you select uh, 2D or 3D geometries, then what should be in Inspire in terms of extended 2D or extended 3D, and then what may be in Inspire according to specific needs of a data provider. So having this in mind, how we uh, proceeded with our extension. Of course, we started from the Inspire Building Core 2D because um, uh, even though designing and providing a more um, an extended data specific uh, data model, uh, it is uh, um, obvious that we want to guarantee that each data provider that will harmonize its own data set according to the extended uh, GeoSmart City data model, uh, at the same time uh, fulfills all the requirements uh, of the uh, core um, data model of Inspire, 
which is binding by law. So we started investigating the uh, inspired building extended 2D because uh, from uh, selecting from the available um, selection of the uh, extended uh, data models, it was the, 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 the one uh, more uh, close to our needs. And then the first attempt was to create the Geosmart City extended uh, data model starting from the Inspire building extended 2D. But we discovered uh, some uh, um, discrepancy that uh, we briefly um, show uh, in a while. Uh, for instance, if you see here in the UML the base extended uh, model representation in UML, in the uh, draft schemas repository, uh, we see that the corresponding XSD was not uh, present. Uh, coming back, uh, the elements present in this base extended are, however, contained in the uh, extended 2D but uh, not properly uh, encoded with some errors. In addition, if you see here the feature type installation, uh, investigating in more details, for instance, with Altova XML Spy, the, um, uh, the content of the XSD, we see that the feature type, which is uh, present here in the UML and uh, uh, needed for uh, some uh, data modeling purposes, it is not encoded at all in the, in the XSD. So uh, we um, uh, discovered, uh, we detected that the um, uh, approach to uh, start to, to create our um, basis from the Inspire Extended 2D was not uh, the most suitable um, approach to be followed because there were some inconsistencies. Therefore, we preferred to uh, start from just the Inspire core um, to D and then providing our extension, of course, taking into account all the elements already uh, present in the Inspire building extended to D in order to do not reinvent the wheel, of course. This is the uh, result of um, our modeling uh, in which you can see in dark green uh, the, um, what, uh, the, the elements that have been uh, inherited by the building extended to the of Inspire as is, so um, elements already present. Then in orange uh, you see the um, which have been inherited by the Inspire Extend 2D, but we introduced some additional uh, attributes here. And in, uh, in uh, Chan here, uh, you see the new uh, elements, in this case, the new feature types that we created um, for the Geosmart City purposes. So this is the um, final picture. Um, this is the uh, matching table uh, which we used to, um, as a first step, to collect all the uh, requirements of the pilots and uh, at the same time you see here in the left part all the elements of the target data model and here how to map the corresponding element of the three pilots and then you see here that in, in red characters are, uh, for instance, a, a new attribute like in this case or like in the next, uh, new, um, new types uh, introduced in the, in, the, in, the, in the data model. It is important to mention that uh, having these working, why we used the Excel formalism to derive the data model? Because at the end of this process, which led to the uh, construction of the UML data model, at the same time you already have here all the detailed mapping in order to start the uh, physical, uh, the, to set the mapping rules with the um, transformation software. Uh, regarding here the, the previous slide were uh, related to the feature types. Here in terms of data type you see that in Chan are the new data type 
and in white or in light uh, gray, they uh, inherited uh, Aziz by uh, building extended to the of Inspire, and in orange, uh, a data type with, uh, in which we introduced some modification. And the same for the code list, in which in Chan you see the new code list, and in uh, white or light gray, uh, the code list inherited Aziz by Inspire to the extended. This uh, just uh, to uh, underline the concept about uh, the suitability of the Excel formalism to start the uh, revision loop. Uh, after that, uh, we uh, produced the first uh, version. Here, it started a revision in which, uh, according to the different uh, legend uh, color of the cells, uh, each uh, of these uh, colored elements have been discussed with the uh, with the with the concern the pilot, and then here you see notes and review uh, in order to uh, provide a full transparent process about how to derive the, um, the final um, data model. So from this step onward, now I leave the floor to my colleague Stefania, which will tell you more details about uh, some of the issues that we derived from this step, which is the final UML data model, in order to derive the physical XSD uh, file to be used as target uh, data model in the transformation uh, tool. Please, Stefania. Thank you, Giacomo. Good morning, everyone. OK, in the slide, uh, you can see the UML diagram of the GeoSmart City data model, the version uh, 2.1. And uh, to get our uh, XSDs, we use the, the Enterprise Architect tool, and uh, more specifically, to the Generate GML Application Schema function, which automatically generates XSD from UML diagram. But uh, uh, it was not a bed of roses, uh, in the sense that we had to face and uh, some, some issues and get through them. First of all, um, The issue related to the building feature type, you can see in the red box. And um, as you can see, the building feature type uh, inherits both attributes from uh, building info feature type and the building to the building feature type. Uh, that is, our feature type building is made up of all attributes in the orange feature type and in the uh, light blue feature type. But when we performed our um, function with uh, the uh, Enterprise Architect tool, we realized that uh, our XSD was missing some attributes, that is, uh, only attributes coming from one feature type can be found. Um, so how did we get through it? Uh, we decided to transform um, feature type building info in a data type. So um, we also transformed the generalization into an association. So feature type building, the green you can see in our uh, model, uh, as generalizes building to the building and is uh, linked to a uh, data type building info. So it contains an attribute of uh, building info data type, complex data type, having all these uh, attributes. We had to face also other problems related to the avoidable stereotype. That is, uh, in our UML, we say here that all these attributes are avoidable. But uh, uh, when we transform and get our uh, XSD, um, we do not find this information, so we had to put our hands on the XSD and uh, solve these problems and other little problems. But uh, in the end, uh, finally, here is what we have. This is our XSD for the GSG building scenario. And then you can see the screenshot of a validation by means of oxygen, and the document is valid. So, um, having the XSD, we now have all that it takes to perform the data transformation. That is to transform a source data set 
in our case, we choose a shape file into a data set compliant to the requirements of just smart city building data model. Um, just one very, very important recommendation. Don't try to perform uh, transformation by means directly of a health software tool or any other transformation software tool because uh, uh, you have to uh, follow a data transformation process that is made up of uh, the following step, uh, steps. Uh, first step is to analyze uh, the data set and identify the source data model. Uh, sometimes a uh, pre-processing phase is required, such in our case, you, we will see it later. And the step two, uh, identification and analysis of the target data model. In our case, the just smart city building data model. Um, then updating and filling of the mapping table. And um, that is a very crucial step because mapping table is a very useful tool to document the mapping process. That is uh, uh, to identify correspondences between the elements of the source data model and target data model. Uh, then step four, analyze and of course solution, hopefully, of, of matching problems that uh, you can um, see while compiling a mapping table. And then execution of the transformation, we select the transformation tool, in our case is a HAIL open source software tool. And then finally creation of transformed data. Um, here is a, a slide that uh, uh, shows the shape file uh, from Marusi, uh, building file. And uh, we just select the subset for reason of brevity because we are going through a live uh, demo. And so we need uh, to go faster. And uh, this uh, is the subset selected. And here we can see the attributes of the shape file. And all these attributes are going to make up our, to make up our source data model. Um, uh, in, in our case, also a preprocessing phase is uh, needed because we need a reprojection from uh, uh, the Greek CRS into the EFCG uh, 3035 uh, that is the one allowed by uh, Inspire data specification. And so we use the um, uh, GIS tool to transform uh, the coordinate reference system, even if uh, uh, we must say that HAIL, the last version of HAIL, allows uh, um, coordinate reference system transformation, but uh, uh, it uh, does not work for all uh, the reference systems. Um, and in the case of the Greek one, we had uh, troubles, so we had to use uh, a QGIS transformation. Uh, this is our target data model. You can see the UML, uh, the um, Excel file containing the, the model, and of course, uh, the data specification on buildings that we, we use to derive our access data. Here you can see the mapping table and the information about the transformation tool. I have already said that HAIL is an open source tool which evaluates conceptual schema mapping and transforms geodata based on the mapping so stated. A download page and so on can be, info can be found in this slide. And this is a generic workflow to transform data sets according to selected target schema requirements. Um, this is the workflow we used in AIL, but it can be used with any transformation software tool, of course. So as first thing, we, had to, we have to import the target and source schemas, then import data, set the mapping rules for the transformation, and finally, uh, after, having select, after having selected all the necessary rules, export the transformed data uh, into a GML, and then validate the transformed data set. So let's go with the HAIL live demo. Oh. 
Okay. Uh, this is the workbench of Hale. And the um, first step is that of loading and source schema. In our case, um, the schema is, all right, we can do it. Can you see? Okay. Import source schema. In our case, the, the, uh, we have different options. We can load from locally from files on, on our PC. On, uh, we can use web resources by means of URLs. Uh, there are also preset so templates uh, um, offered by Hale. We can also load directly from WFS or connect to a database. Um, for at the moment, only uh, out of the box uh, uh, connection is offered for PostGIS and the PostgreSQL database. So uh, we import our source schema. It is the shape file of building from Marusi locally. This. Okay, here we go. Finish. Okay. Uh, second step, I, you can see here the attributes of the shape file that uh, represent our source data model. Then next step is that of uh, importing target schema. Import target schema. Uh, also, in this case, we can uh, select a source from file, from uh, URL, from presets. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see we can uh, um, import directly inspire schemas. Um, also, from WFS, from a database. Um, so, same things uh, that I've already said apply. In our case, uh, uh, target schema is placed on uh, Epsilon Italia um, download area. And uh, so we import from URL. Here it is, just to building a model. Um, automatically, it, it detects, uh, software detects it is an XML schema. And now we click finish. Okay, uh, target data model is imported. Uh, third step, it's not mandatory, but is uh, strongly recommended to import also source data. Uh, because uh, this way, uh, Hale can perform an online validation on the data we have uh, imported for each mapping step we perform. So each association, each correspondence we uh, set up, uh, trans um, validation of this transformation effects is performed by Hale. So uh, again, let's import source data. In our case, source data is the shape file. So uh, again, we import it from file, from Marusi shape file, building silent sample, okay. So next, uh, of course, Hale asks us about which type uh, this data refer to, In building samples is okay, so next and finish. Um, now we can save the project. Um, oh, yes, okay. Um, just uh, to let you know that uh, when we import data, the number of instances important is uh, written here. In this case, 23 instances. Now, 
we can save the project, so file, save, alignment project, click, and we choose to the, the export format. In, in this case, we decide to save as hail project. That is, uh, we are going to save only alignment and styles. Uh, other option is that of saving uh, the, our project as a project archive. That is what we are going to do um, in the end because uh, it uh, creates a zip file that includes also uh, all local resources, also the data. So, in this case, let's save as a L project. Next, and choose a name. Go next. Select a destination file, and here we go. Next, finish. Okay. Now we have to map our source data model into our target data model. In our case, let's say if we use, for example, our um, data model expressed as X, um, XML, uh, the feature type is the building feature type. So our shape file is a shape file of building, and uh, we need to retype our shape file attributes into building feature type attributes. Yes, also in here in the UML diagram, building feature type, and all the attributes related to it, inherited both from. Uh, building info and the building to the building. How are we doing that? So select building seven sample, so the shape file, select the building feature type in the target, and then associate shape file and the target feature type by means of a mapping function, to select the right mapping function, click on the double blue arrow and select the retype. By means of retype fu function, hail uh, create one instance of a target for each instance in the source data set. So let's retype it. Next. Finish. So, now let's go, oh, let's save again, yes, okay. Uh, now, let's uh, explode the fe building feature type. Uh, now that we have uh, uh, used the retype function, you can see that uh, next to the building feature type appears the number of uh, instances associated. And, and you see that now we have also 23 instances of building in the building feature type. Now, uh, let's choose uh, one field, uh, for example, the Inspire ID field. Um, that is the external object identifier. It's a unique object identifier, um, which may be used to reference the special object. Um, it's, it's a data type, is a complex data type, um, and uh, it's, a, it's a mandatory, as you can see, multiplicity is one, and it's not voidable. So, uh, we can see also in the UML, here it is, Inspire Identifier. And we Okay, we can find in the building feature type the Inspire ID field. Let's open and let's see the data type identifier is uh, mandatory because there is a red star in the icon, 
when you see the red star, it means that it's a mandatory attribute. So let's uh, expand it. And we see that it's a complex data type. It's made up of three attributes, the local ID, the namespace, and the version ID. Local ID and namespace are uh, mandatory. Um, local ID, uh, we have in our source uh, um, data model, um, okay, the class ID attribute, and we map in the local ID. To do that, we use the rename function. Of course, we select the class ID attribute and the local ID. Then we click on the blue arrow and select the rename function. Next, finish. As, as you can see, uh, okay, in the um, right bottom part of the screen, you can see the validation, that uh, online validation is made by Hale. Um, the green arrow here means the uh, instant transformation is okay, that is uh, uh, transformation between um, class ID and uh, local ID was okay, but uh, the yellow triangle here um, says to me that uh, um, the validation of all uh, the, the data transformation, of course, is uh, still not working. Of course, we just made one association. Um, so next, we try to uh, fill in the namespace value, namespace attribute. In this case, we do not have in our source data set uh, um, a value specified for this attribute and we assign a value by means of the assign function. So uh, namespace um, is, um, is suggested to be built according to, um, um, uh, okay, building, um, bringing information that are related to the member state, to the data provider, and the data uh, product. Uh, so we assign, use, okay, click on the blue arrow, use the assign function, click next, and in this case we use the name, the code of the member state that is Greece in our case, a GR, uh, dot, then the uh, data provider that Epsilon Greece, and the data product that is building. Then click Finish. Uh, also in this case, instance transformation is uh, good, is green, and of course instance validation says that something is still missing. If we click on instance validation and the error log, we can see, okay, what warnings are. So, report warnings, and uh, of course, Hale says to me that uh, geometry is not yet filled, that the ID is, uh, is missing. So, let's go and uh, fill those attributes. The ID, the ID you can see here, let's choose, okay, in the target window, uh, is the GML ID. Uh, it is uh, um, a mandatory attribute um, for GML data specification, and uh, it uh, must be unique, and uh, um, it is checked in the XSD validation. So, um, in this case, we use, um, okay, we are not uh, there, is, there are no suggestions regarding the value uh, which uh, must be given to the GML ID, but uh, as a good practice, we used to fill the GML ID with the local ID value. Uh, 
uh, even because this way we can uh, uh, also test that uh, local ID is unique because uh, uh, local ID value is unique because this test is performed on uh, GML ID value in our XSD tests. So let's select ID and uh, class ID and choose the rename function. Finish. Okay, we can go next also if we don't need it. In this case, just to see what tasks and then click finish. Let's go on with our mapping. And uh, yeah, yes, save the project. Yes, yeah. they tell me save the project. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, let's choose another attribute. Uh, for example, uh, the elevation attribute. Um, also, in this case, uh, uh, it is uh, described in the mapping table. In the, the data type is a complex data type, the elevation data type. And uh, we can see from the mapping table that we need uh, to map in this field the building elevation value of, of our shape file. Uh, here in the UML diagram, we can see elevation of type, data type elevation. Uh, if we go to the data types, we can see that elevation is a complex data type uh, made up of two attributes, elevation reference, which is uh, elevation reference value, which there is a code list, and the elevation value, that is a, a di direct quotation. Yes, yeah, so let's go and see what elevation reference value is. Uh, it's a code list. Okay. Uh, extensibility is none, that is, uh, it's closed, we cannot add new values. Uh, it's an inspire code list, um, and uh, it's uh, described in, uh, in the implementing rules and also in the, the specification. And uh, here you can uh, see listed all the possible values. Let's go on with our mapping. So let's find elevation. Open. OK. Also in this case, we can see it's a mandatory. Then we all op open it and see that uh, it's a complex data type. We have the two attributes, elevation reference and elevation value. Elevation value is linked. We have already seen it in the mapping table to elevate value of the shape file. So we can uh, associate them by means of rename function. Next. Okay. Now let's go on with elevation reference attribute. We know it's a code list. Uh, according to what's specified in, uh, by Spire, uh, code list must be referenced as uh, href. And uh, so we, are, we can import in, uh, Inspire, is the Inspire code list in our HAIL project. So I'll go import code list. In this case, uh, we, we should uh, uh, use a uh, uh, file, a uh, URL, but we have the possibility to go to the Inspire registry and download from Inspire registry directly. So click. Uh, it's in Italian because our, uh, um, OK. Here we go, elevation. Elevation code list, so import it. Yes. Uh, okay. You see, um, you have seen it um, in Italian because uh, the operating system is an uh, Italian language and uh, the browser as well. 
so uh, let's go. Uh, select, click on the href, then uh, the blue arrow, and uh, select assign. Next. Now we can uh, choose uh, among selected code list, imported code list. Okay. Here we see the elevation reference value code list. Select and click OK. And now, clicking on the arrow on the drop down field, we can see the value associated to the code list. In this case, we use a general ground, we choose a general ground, and click finish. So, another attribute, for example, date of construction. Let's see it in the Excel. Okay, date of construction. Uh, in, in this case, in our source file, we, of course, do not have just one date because we have uh, the date of the beginning of construction and, and the ending date. So, um, we have to choose uh, a complex data type that is date of event. Uh, and uh, associate uh, the association in the uh, pilot two of the two attributes. Okay. If we open the shape file and ask for attributes, we can see that we have the begin date and an end date, 10 year, 10 years period. Yeah. And we can see also another thing that uh, we have just the year, four digit for the year, while uh, the um, date of event type requires uh, information related, date of event that type here it is, uh, requires also information related to the day, the day and the month and the time. So, data type, date of event, beginning and the data type is date time. Okay, let's go. Here is date of construction. In this case, it is not mandatory. But if we choose to use the date of construction, it is mandatory, of course, we feel that of event. Uh, we uh, choose the beginning date or end date, OK, beginning. In this case, uh, OK, we select the uh, begin attribute in the source file. Then blue arrow, and in this case we use the function date extraction. This function uh, lets us specify how, uh, which is the format of the date we have. So click next. Okay, the date format. In our case, we also we only have year, so we just write down for. Okay, for wise, and click finish. And the hail will uh, fill uh, um, the missing information of uh, month and the day and hours and minutes and seconds uh, with uh, zero or one. So first of January, and so on. Here it is, since the transformation is okay, as we can see there. And uh, okay, let's go and uh, let's uh, fill the end value. In this case, we choose to um, fill this value with the, the end of the year, not the beginning. So we cannot use the date extraction, but we use another function. So uh, let's select end in source and the target schema, and click double arrow, 
and select formatted string function. Uh, uh, in this case, we see that the uh, attribute of the source dataset is the end attribute. Date of event end is the target one. Then next. Okay, let's click on the end uh, attribute, the attribute variables. Okay, and click. Okay, and then specify that we want uh, December 31, 31st, okay, December, that's 12, okay. So we just uh, have built in the string, and okay, and we are ready, finished. Okay, instance transformation is okay. In the alignment window, of course, you can see uh, all the mapping we made, of course, okay? Uh, the function we used to link uh, the source attribute and the target attribute. Uh, okay, it, it's important to inhale the fact that we can have a look at the data, just uh, go on the up and select data, go up, up and select data, okay. The alignment is on the left, and on the right we can see the source data, so what we have uh, in, the, in the attribute of the shape file, and here is what we have uh, with our transformation. If we explode, uh, we can see that uh, beginning is now um, filled in with uh, the right info. Beginning and end value. Let's have a look, for example, at the first instance. So beginning is uh, 1980. And we also have the information about the month and uh, uh, the day and the time. The ending date is in 1990, okay? And as we see, there is uh, December 31st, okay. Let's go on with another attribute. In this case, uh, height above ground. In this case, also there is a uh, complex data type. And uh, here is the attribute of the shape file that is related to it. And it's a complex data type, so we have two information the height of the building and the height status. Okay, the height valve and the height status. Um, okay, so as we can see, we will see later, there is a code list associated to the status. Okay, let's see the height valve ground, okay. It's data type is height above ground, so let's see it in the data type window, okay. So we have the value that is the length, that is mandatory, and then we have three voidable attributes, and the status, that is uh, height status value. Height status value is, uh, is a code list that we can see here, and there's only two values. It's a extensibility none. We cannot add any value. Uh, it's an inspire code list. And, uh, only two values are possible, estimated and measured. So, okay, I'm height above ground. Let's explode that at a time, let's open, okay. So the value, 
is mandatory. Yes, of course, we have to specify which is the unit of measure. Okay, value is related to height value, shape file attribute. So let's rename it. Let's finish. And now let's specify which is the unit of measure. It's not present in our um, uh, source shape file, so we are going to assign a value. Okay. Let's say meter. Okay, for the status, we have already seen that is uh, a code list. So again, go and import the code list from its file registry. Okay, buildings. Okay. Let's import it. Okay. In this case, uh, um, the status is uh, in uh, shapefile attribute, but we cannot just use a rename function because a uh, code list must be referred to by an uh, href. So we have to build uh, the line string. In this case, we use a classification function which associates uh, uh, value based on what is contained in the source attribute. So let's select height status, uh, href, and uh, double click. OK. Classification function, classification, go. OK, click Next. Now uh, we can uh, See, for example, if, if we click on the second icon, we can fill source value with uh, occurring values. So let's click it. In this case, we have just estimated as value, okay, the only value. In the target value part, we can uh, specify which is the URL, the URL of the code list. So let's click on the icon. Select the I status value. Okay. And now we can choose the value. In this case, estimated. Okay, finish. So each time in the source uh, data set we find the value estimate, uh, a new instance is created in the target feature type in which uh, uh, value is, uh, uh, is built according to what we have stated in this classification rule. Let's go, for example, and to the data perspective and see that uh, in the source we have, uh, for example, 15 value, and if we open the target instance, value is 15. If we go to the status, is estimated, but if we click on status, we see that href is constructed with the right uh, um, inspire code list value. So let's save, okay. And uh, now, let's go to the geometry and, and see how geometry 2D is mapped. In our case, uh, geometry is uh, also a complex data type, building geometry 2D. 
And uh, it's mandatory, of course. Geometry is mandatory. It's not avoidable. And um, let's see here that our building feature type inherits building geometry 2D from buildings 2D feature type. Building uh, geometry 2D is the data type. Let's see how data type is made. Uh, here it is, building geometry 2D. We have uh, uh, six attributes, four non-voidable attributes, uh, of which three are mandatory. Geometry of GM object, horizontal geometry reference, uh, which, he associate, which is associated to the code list, reference geometry, which is Boolean, vertical geometry reference, and then two voidable uh, attributes related to accuracy of measurement. Let's open geometry to D. Here it is, building geometry. And we have uh, all our six attributes. OK. Let's explode geometry, abstract geometry. And then we have to select uh, the right one. Uh, in our case, we have buildings, so we have uh, um, buildings 2D, so we have uh, surfaces, and uh, more specifically, polygon. So we must associate the geometry attribute to the polygon attribute by means of the rename function finish. Um, it is to be said here that we uh, um, faced a new issue. Um, using as target model the um, building core uh, and mapping geometry, uh, just as we have just done, so uh, mapping the, geo the geom field of the shape file to the polygon attribute of uh, building geometry, HAIL performs a uh, correct transformation. That is, uh, um, a polygon is filled then uh, by means of this uh, uh, exterior element, then abstract ring, linear ring, and then post list, which is which contain element that contains the coordinate the, uh, of the points uh, that make up the border of the polygon. Uh, but in uh, in case of extended um, XSD, uh, we found out that uh, Hale uh, does not perform a correct encoding, GML encoding. So we had to put hands on the um, uh, GML dataset, but we will see this later on. Let's go on with our transformation uh, for the moment. So, let's map horizontal geometry reference. It is a code list. So, we must import code list from Inspire registry. Here it is geometry reference value. And let's see where it is. OK, here it is. Also, in this case, it's an Inspire uh, code list, which cannot be extended. OK, let's import. We know how to do code list. From Inspire registry, click, select, buildings. Horizontal geometry reference, okay, okay. So let's explode href, click on the functions and assign. Next, click on the right icon, select horizontal geometry reference value code list, okay. 
and select the right value, in this case, uh, um, footprint. Here it is. Okay. Finish. Next attribute is a reference geometry. Mm -hmm. That is a Boolean. Okay, here's the definition. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, the, the Boolean says that um, this is our uh, reference geometry. Okay, assign. Next. And in this case, uh, Hale knows that it's a Boolean, so true or false. In this case, this is our reference geometry, so we set it to true. Finish. Now, the other attribute, which is uh, horizontal geometry estimated accuracy. Mm -hmm. With we don't have this information in our source data set. So, um, multiplicity is one, but it is voidable. So, we are obliged to uh, map this attribute in the target feature type, but we do not have uh, um, any value to associate. So, we specify any reason, leave it voidable, and specify a new reason, so assign, next, in this case unknown, finish. Uh, as you can see, the um, unit of measure um, uh, is a an mandatory attribute, and also the warning says this to me, that the UOM is missing. So, um, also in this case, I don't know, so I use the assign function, next, and put unknown as value. Oh, if you see here, Instance validation is not yet a, uh, no more a yellow triangle, so our instance validation is okay, our instance transformation is okay, and the reports say that we have we succeeded, so report success true, finish it successfully. So we save, and now we we are ready to export our data. So transform, physically transform a shapefile dataset into a dataset conformant to the Geosmart City um, requirements. Okay, transform project data. Okay, next, select and send next. Now we choose uh, uh, the root of our GML. Our GML is a feature collection. Next. And select, of course, a destination, so a file. Let's call it the uh, uh, live. Okay. And save. Now we, we say we want to have the validation. Say XML validation. Next. Here, here, if uh, we need, we can convert geometry to a given uh, CRS. But in our case, we have already done it by means of a GIS tool. So I'll leave it blank. Go next. And finish. We encounter the problem that is related to the geometry. So the validation says that uh, uh, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And it says that the element that is wrong is a GML line string. In fact, Hale 
that did not perform the correct encoding by means of uh, fossilis uh, GML element and uses the line string. So, let's see the GML produced. Here it is. Hopefully it pops, uh, it opens, okay. Okay. And let's let's find uh, okay, we see that we have uh, the different uh, uh, instances of the energy building with different different information, the GML ID, date of event. Uh, the elevation reference, the beginning and end date, and so on. As you can see, the source dataset information are correctly re written in the GML dataset exported. As you can see, the local ID is the same as the same value as, as the GML ID. The namespace uh, is uh, made up of information related to the member state, the data provider and product. The encoding of the code list is the right one. And so on. OK, here is the problem. Here comes the problem. Uh, as you can see, geometry, polygon is OK, but we are missing the coordinate of the points that uh, uh, make up the border. Um, okay, we perform the um, transformation using the uh, building XSD from Inspire, Inspire 4, and this is the correct, okay, as you can see, this is the correct encoding, so polygon, exterior, linear, ring, and post list containing the points of the curve. So, what we did, we can validate, yes, we can validate uh, with oxygen. So, the GML that uh, was obtained using building core as a target application schema is valid, it's valid GML as you can see here. Okay. Now let's go back to the other GML, the GSGBU Live we have just obtained. Maybe. Uh -huh. Okay, let's see with the GIS. Okay. Okay, this is the GML we obtained using the building core XSD. And we can see that the right information can be found. Okay, so strip file is the pink one. And in, in the light blue is a transformed data set information. So we open, okay, it opened. Um, let's select the GML polygon element. Okay. So what we did to obtain a um, valid GML is uh, to put hands on this GML and uh, um, copy and paste the right encoding uh, 
obtained in the other GML by means of uh, uh, building core XSD. Okay. Okay, and so we were able to so just copy and paste. And so well, we are um, investigating to find a solution. Just we are we are reporting this issue to the Hail uh, team, and uh, hopefully, hopefully this issue will be solved uh, soon. <laughs> Uh, just to clarify what we are um, uh, showing here is that the, uh, using the uh, Inspire core we obtained a valid GML because of the uh, correct encoding of the geometries but of course uh, for the Jasmine City purposes we need the extended data model in order to um, encode all the enriched semantics which is uh, in, in our data set. So, uh, because it is evident that at the moment Hale has a, a problem in dealing with the extended data model, just to show the full uh, cycle of obtaining a valid GML, we used the, uh, in the transformation using a target model, the G GeoSmart City extended data model, to map all the semantics, but in order to have the correct encoding of the geometry, we used a piece of the encoding made using the Inspire Core data model uh, which allows to have a correct uh, geometry encoding in order to obtain a valid GML. Of course this is a, a not a very direct and straightforward uh, procedure but meanwhile these uh, pending issues will be solved with the AIL team. We show with the how it is important to properly uh, know and manage the transformation tool in order to play with it in the proper way to obtain your final goal, which is to obtain a valid GML. So that, that's all from our side. And, uh, and um, so uh, we hope that we provided a full uh, view on uh, all the ingredients which are needed to perform a successful transformation. Of course, you need uh, a source uh, data uh, and then you need a target uh, data model that we explained how to uh, obtain uh, starting from an existing and valid uh, Inspire uh, data model using all the precautions that we, we show it. Then we explained in very detail how to perform the transformation steps with AIL and then we uh, highlighted this uh, still pending issue that, of course, can be solved putting your hands in the GML file. Uh, meanwhile, the encoding uh, issue uh, and transformation issue could be uh, fully solved. So, um, I don't know if, if there are uh, questions, please uh, put on, on the chat. And um, of course, uh, this uh, uh, webinar uh, will be um, made, uh, the recording will be made uh, available. And of course, uh, you can uh, put any kind of, uh, of uh, question also uh, at a later stage. Hello, Giacomo. Are you listening yes. to me? It's Nelson. Portugal, Municipia. Yes, yes. Um, can you, uh, we have some uh, questions for, uh, for you. Yeah. The, the XSD file, you, you are sending us, you don't, I think we don't have that, that file. Is that of correct? Of course. Can, can you mute yourself because uh, uh, otherwise we we listen typing your your uh, keyboard uh, or for someone else? Um, oh yes, you still do not have um, uh, the uh, XSD file uh, because uh, simply because we are uh, still uh, before to pass to all the partners the XSD we were aiming to uh, solve these pending issues uh, uh, with AIL, but. Uh, 
uh, having now showed how to deal with uh, them, uh, we are uh, ready to, to, to send the XSD, uh, but you have to uh, have clear in mind that when you will perform uh, the transformation, you will encounter the issues uh, with the geometry. Of course, uh, we will keep you posted about the solution, but uh, of course you will encounter, uh, if using AIL, you will, uh, you will encounter the, um, the, the same issues that we showed before, and then you can use our proposed solution. You will receive uh, as, a, as an email, uh, as an attachment to the email, uh, beginning of uh, next, next week on Monday. Uh, yeah, okay, there, okay. Okay. There is a question uh, from, sorry? Uh, I have uh, another question uh, related with um, the GML. Uh, uh, it's just a question we don't we really don't know. It's it's possible uh, instead of exporting to XML to export to post to Postgres. Of course, the um, the, the correct uh, um, formalism to derive and to deliver um, a data model is the XSD. Then. Uh, according to the um, to the to the to the, uh, to, to, to the ingestion procedure that uh, you want to uh, use in order to have your uh, um, the same structure available as tables in a, in a, in a relational in a relational database. I think it depends on the administration tools that you have regarding your. Um, your, uh, but regarding post yes, uh, I don't know if my colleagues want to add anything. The, 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 the standard format that we use it is to export as, as an XD. Uh, okay, okay. okay. And the last question. Can you use when... all of this format? One yeah, of yeah, yeah. So you can export to the database, but it's an experimental function. Okay, okay, but uh, I know the deliverable is uh, GML. Okay. Yes. Regarding uh, before to pass to the reply of Anestis, uh, um, of Dimitri, sorry. Um, uh, regarding the question of uh, Genoa um, colleagues. Uh, uh, at the Lisbon conference uh, last uh, week, uh, we had a talk with the guys uh, uh, who are developing uh, and maintaining uh, HAIL, and they said that uh, uh, they are working on a plugin to connect to Oracle database, but uh, is, it is not yet available to the community because it is uh, in an uh, experimental uh, phase even though they added uh, that uh, most likely this plugin will not be made available for free. So there is also a licensing policy that it is under discussion. By the way, we started a discussion with them asking their availability to let uh, Geosmar City interested uh, partners uh, to use uh, for free contributing to this uh, experimental phase. So uh, things are uh, ongoing and I will keep you posted. Then passing to the question of, uh, uh, of um, uh, the question of uh, Epsilon Greece, uh, please so kind to, us, uh, to tell us once again when we are using a sign rename class function on AIL. So, Stefania, would you like to reply? Yes. Okay. Um, we use the rename function when we can associate uh, the attribute, the element from the data source, uh, just uh, as is, and put it into the target element. Okay? For example, uh, the class ID, that is uh, an ID, we just can use the RNA function. We want to put the same value in the local ID value of the target application schema, feature target. 
For example, if we see with the data, in the source data, we have class ID Maru C1992 and as identifier inspire ID, okay, identifier local ID Maru C1992, okay, not that file, <laughs> okay, 1992. And um, so this is for the name, a sign. Sign uh, lets you uh, associate a constant value the element. Okay, uh, it's useful when you do not have, for example, any uh, suit element to associate. In the case of the namespace, we assign a string to the namespace, um, put it into the information we want. In, in this case, the member state, the data provider, data product, and so on. And uh, which was the other one? Ah, classification. Uh, okay, classification is used in another case. For example, in, uh, in the high state value uh, uh, attribute, we have the value estimated. But we cannot use this value as is in the target feature type. Because uh, according to expire, code list must be referred to as uh, x links, as uh, href. So, we associate to the uh, element uh, estimated that is contained in the in the attribute, in the source attribute, uh, the same value, but with uh, um, the right HTTP. Okay, so we transform the value of the source into a target value. Okay, the source value is estimated, the target value that is put in the target feature type is HTTP, inspire, and so on, and then estimate. Okay, let's go to the, to reply to the other question um, from the colleagues over to you, please. Uh, so they are basically, they are asking how to deal with uh, um, attributes which in the search, which have to be mapped uh, with a code list, but the instances have uh, different values of the code list. If one case is estimated or not. Uh, in some cases, we don't exactly give insights. Uh, the list has just two measured and estimated. In this case, in our data set, there was just the estimated. Should we have uh, uh, also the measured uh, value in the instances, measured should have appeared, and so we have mapped the use of the declassification. Uh, in our, in our uh, shape file, all were estimated. But if there were just measured also as value, when you click on the icon with the plus, yellow plus icon, also, the value measured comes out, so you can map, okay? Okay, now let me refer to the third question about the, um, the third question is about the uh, software to transform uh, UML to XSD. Uh, one, the, let me say that um, the, um, the people uh, from uh, Inspire team, uh, they are using uh, shape change. We uh, which is a uh, which is a free tool, but uh, it requires uh, some effort in the um, configuration files to perform the, the translation from UML to XSD. We use the uh, Enterprise Architect, which uh, has this uh, function built in. But it is uh, extremely important to re recommend that in any case, you need to be very careful in looking at the results of the automatic automatic uh, generation of the XSD because you have to uh, see uh, with your eyes and make some uh, manual intervention in order to make it working because then it is important that you have to validate your schema uh, before your XSD schema before to use it in any transformation software. You, you may remember that uh, we showed the errors that we got in the uh, in the case of the double inheritance in the UML. One feature type 
in editing two uh, feature types, the encoding generated some problems. And similar problems have been encountered also with shape change in the uh, draft uh, schemas extended to the of, of Inspire. So, um, independently from the software that you use, uh, you need to check carefully and eventually intervene uh, by hands. Uh, regarding the question from uh, Tracasa, so where is the correct GML for polygons obtained from? Very simply, uh, it is uh, we uh, in order to obtain the correct uh, geometries, we mapped, we made the uh, mapping uh, with ale using as a source uh, dataset and source schema the same dataset and the same schema used. Uh, for the transformation uh, according to the Josmar City data model, but using as target schema the Inspire core, and then we obtained a GML which is valid, containing the correct geometry but very limited uh, semantics. Okay, so it seems uh, that uh, uh, there are uh, no more questions. We will uh, arrange also the Apart from the availability of the registration, also of the files that we used in the in the in the webinar, so you can perform uh, again uh, the same uh, path, the same flow uh, by your own. So uh, we will announce uh, soon uh, the next webinar using the um, underground uh, Josmar City data model. And meanwhile, I thank you all for your attention. You will receive uh, by email a um, questionnaire in which you are kindly required to report uh, your feedback about the webinar. So thank you very much again, and see you at the next webinar. Bye. Bye. Bye.